thank you for your presence in this house. And we thank you that the people can tap into your presence and just experience healing. So even while you're right here in this room, whatever people of God you need, ask the Lord to do it right now. Come on, he's here, he's here. Come on, ask him. He's in your presence. Come on, whatever it is you came for, come on, whatever it is you need, you ask him for it now. He's in your presence now. He's in your presence now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray for Sister Jacqueline right now in the hospital. We pray, God, that you would heal her. We pray, God, that you would bring deliverance. We pray, God, Lord, for her spirit man that be strengthened in you, the inner man. And so, God, we give your name the praise and honor and the glory. And Father God, as we go into this word, God, we thank you, Lord, that you are touching the hearts and mind of all your people. And so, God, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. We claim healing. We claim deliverance. This part of the kingdom. Healing is the children's bread. It just belongs to us. It's just a meal we eat. So, God, we thank you. That's not complicated. We just receive it. Hallelujah. We just receive it. It's not a complicated thing. It's as close to eating food. It's, it's just not complicated. It's just receiving what he said. Healing is the children's bread. That's your substance. Hallelujah. So, we just receive it. Hallelujah. He sent his word and he healed them. He healed them. He, we just receive it. We just receive it. Hallelujah. We just receive it. We just receive it. Hallelujah. We, it's just that simple. We just receive it. We don't fight. We don't fight. Hey, we don't have our belief. We just receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just receive it. He said, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal you. We just receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just receive it. We just receive it. We just receive it. It's just that simple. We just take, eat. This is my body. Ha. Ha. Come on. That was broken for you. Take. Come on and eat. This is my body that was broken for you. We just take. We eat. It's just that simple. We just receive it. Thank you, God. And so, God, we thank you. Thank you, God. We thank you that your word, it, it, it has no barriers. Your word goes forth and it goes and it sends out healing. Hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you right now you, in your son Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Come on, to him we give glory. To him we give honor. Come on, we just don't realize it. What God has allowed you to go through. And so we thank him. We thank him. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Man, that a person that's born of a woman, is his days is full of trouble. Thank you, Jesus. But we got a God yes. that delivers us out of them all. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's when we have the victory. Yes, that's God. when we experience the praise. Hallelujah. Yes, because we know if he delivered us out of this, he'll deliver us out of that. Yes. Whatever your this is. Come on. I already expect it to be a that now. Come on. Whatever your this is right now, it's going to soon be a that. Hallelujah. He did this before. He's going to do it again. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we thank God and we praise him because he's just so worthy. He's just so worthy. He's just so worthy. Hallelujah. We're going to open our Bible to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to go at verse 33. How do you know that uh, we are yet in a war? Amen. We are yet in a war and God is preparing us. God is a man of war. Amen. Somebody say he is a man of war. Man That's of what the war. Bible says. Yes. Come on. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Yes. Amen. So when, when God brought his people out of the land of Egypt and he was going to take them to their promised land, he said, I brought out my armies yes. out of Egypt. Mm. He brought them out yes. as an army. What do you need an army for? Right. Unless you're going to go out into battle. Right. Right? Because yeah. you're about to take some territory that other people are already on. Yeah. Amen. So he's yeah. preparing you in the battle. So he sets you up. And as you go through, you get to see the miracles. You get to see the Red Sea open. You get to see um, we, we deal with the water kingdom. Right. Amen. Looking at the water spirits underneath the ground, they got to look and see us passing by with the tambourines and praising God. 
Yeah. Amen. So they just looking and seeing that you're just going over on dry ground. Because right. the wind had to blow a path. Hallelujah for the people to cross over. Yeah. So how do you know that even, even in that crossing over, there's a time and place in the wilderness where God is preparing and testing you. Yeah. Right. Amen. He tests his people to see Amen. whether or not you believe, see what's in your heart. Yeah. Amen. It's about to see what's in your heart. He already yeah. knows what he had for you. Yeah. Amen. Not, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's yeah. just so that you can see what's in your own heart. Yeah. Right. And that way, while you can see what's in your heart, he can help you. Yeah. yeah. Amen. He can help you. Yeah. Amen. We understand when Moses went up into the mount and, and, and Aaron was left down there. And we see that the people had pressured Aaron into making them gods. All right. Yeah. Right. Aaron listened to the people and caused the people to walk in whoredom, yeah. to walk in adultery. Right. Uh -huh. He caused them to do that because they said, come on, make us a God that brought us out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. They did not look at God correctly. I mean, you know, if you don't see him right, you will not hear him right. Right. And so same is for you. Look at your neighbor and say, if you don't see me right, you're not going to hear me right. You don't see me right, you're not going to hear me right. So we're talking about the battle of vision. Remember we talked about the battle of vision. So, so we're going to deal with a portion of vision that causes people to not see you correctly, but right. understand that those who are seen incorrectly, amen, you need to know that there is a mark on you, and you need to understand that you, you are the one that's coming into the things of the kingdom. Right. And so the kingdom is understanding who you are, right. amen, and then don't even understand the kingdom of the world yeah. is seeing you for who you are. Yeah. You are a light that shines. It cannot be hidden. It right. cannot be hidden under a bushel. You're shining so bright. You don't even realize how bright you shine. Right. And so they're seeing you coming and they say, oh no, right. no, no. They're angry. Right. They, 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 hey, no, no. Mm -hmm. Because remember we talked about last year was a year of the fallen. The year of the fall is so people that were in these places and positions, God said they were going to fall because they were evil and wicked. Amen. And so God, they were going to be falling, but at the same time, they were going to try to keep their place by holding on to the people that were doing right. Amen. So they're fighting for their positions and fighting for a place of power. So we're looking at Matthew 21. And we're looking at verse 33, and Jesus is again talking in parables. And remember, he's talking to people in parables and to his own disciples. He talks to them plainly. Right. Right? Because he reveals unto them the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's only for God's disciples. Right. Right? It's not for the other ones that are hearing. So take heed. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and they slew him. And when the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto these husbandmen? They said unto him, he will miserably destroy these wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their season. Mm. Jesus, answered, Jesus said unto them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Mm. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Mm. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you right. and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Mm. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. Mm. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard this parable, they perceived that he spake of them. Mm. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him a prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. So look and say replacement. 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 Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor again and say replacement. Replacement. It belongs to the air. Belongs to the air. 
belongs to the heir. What's rightfully yours. Mm. So somebody's been hiding and sitting on land. That's not theirs. Right. It's been rented out. Huh. It's been set. And it's been positioned for people to do what they're supposed to rightfully do. Mm -hmm. And God wants his fruit. Huh. So God has been sending. Mm -hmm. He's been sending time and time again. Been sending those to come and collect the fruit. Mm -hmm. But every time God would send someone, they would kill them. Mm -hmm. You know, God would send a prophet. And they would look at the prophet and stone the prophet. He had the word of the Lord. They right. stoned the prophets. Mm -hmm. He would send another. They would stone and kill that one. And he said, oh, no, let, let me send my son. They won't kill him. They're going to mm -hmm. reverence my son. Right. This is this is our property. Mm -hmm. And I loaned it out for them for the fruit. Mm -hmm. They knew what kind of person I was. It don't belong to them. Mm -hmm. And so here he sends the son. They see him from a distance and say, this is the heir. Mm -hmm. We're going to kill him. And so, God, I want you to know in this time of the fall, look at your name. When God is doing this thing, I want you to really look at their faces because they really need to get this. Mm -hmm. When God is doing something, it's not, oh, I'm sorry. Right. Um, I have to come and take this from you mm -hmm. because uh, my daddy said that we should mm -hmm. have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's never yours. Give me my stuff. Right. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Well, that part. Right. Hey. Y'all been setting the empire on here. Okay. It was never yours. Y'all didn't put the whole, where you get that track from? Nobody told you to rent that. Nobody told you to put that on this property. Right, right. Where'd your, where'd your name come from? Huh? Oh, you put your name? Huh? This ain't yours. Right. Amen. And so it's not like a, oh, I'm so sorry. I gotta come take you. No, uh -huh. he been warning them. Right, see? He been warning them. See? Right. And he been telling them. See? He said, I have fruit that I need to have. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the people. Right, right. But y'all hogging it up. See? And I've got to give the fruit to the people uh -huh. so they can live. Yeah. Right. But y'all hogging it up. Yeah. Just like the Pharisees who would who would know the way to get into the veil. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't go in and they wouldn't let the people go in. Mm -hmm. How many know you need to know God for yourself? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. We don't have to go before a Catholic priest. No. Or any other priest, you have to have your own relationship with God. That's right. There's nobody to block that. That's right. Jesus made the way for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. He Amen. made the way for every last one of us. When the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, He made the way. He changed the order of the priesthood. All right. No longer of the order of the Aaron. Uh -huh. He's the order after the order of Melchizedek. That's right. Everybody can come because right. the veil is open. All it's right. been rent. It's been snatched. Right. So right. nobody, listen, nobody can stop you from hearing God and being in his presence. Yeah. No lie can stop you. Death can't stop you. Come on, hell and the grave can't uh -huh, stop you. Uh -huh. And the people that represent, he said, he said, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So sometimes people are gates. Yeah. And people are gates of hell. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, but the gates of hell shall not prevail right. against my church because right. it's my church that has that has positioned themselves to be able to receive from the kingdom uh -huh. and not only from the kingdom, from the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. So people have positioned themselves and they position themselves right in there in the place of a gate. And the, the gate, they have the gates of hell, they have the gates of shell, they have the, the gates of death and the grave. Come on, uh -huh. celestial gates. These uh -huh. are gates that are open. And so people have access to the kingdom, yeah. but it's to the kingdom of darkness. Uh -huh. Because he said in the kingdom of God, there's also good. In the kingdom of heaven, there's good and there's bad. Yeah, but yeah. in the kingdom of God, that's where God's things come down. Come on. Where there's the father of light in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So every good and every perfect gift comes from the father above. Yeah, comes yeah. from the father of light yeah. and there's no darkness in him. Yeah. So every good and perfect gift. So now you got to think about if, if God said every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, uh -huh. in whom there is no variableness. When you think about your own life and you 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 remember the things that you may have gone through, and you know that you are in Christ now. Amen. Thank God you're in Christ now. Yeah. But when you really think about it, when you look back in your life, and before you even connect it back to your Father in heaven, right? Who connected themselves to you? Right, 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 right. right. 
Jesus. Because if, if the world, if the world hates Jesus, yeah. it's going to hate you. Right. And if they knew that Jesus was coming before he came, because it was a prophecy already written right. that a star would be raised from the east. Mm -hmm. And it was Balak, the one who cursed God's people, King Balak, and Balaam, the prophet. Balaam was the one who was able to see, but I see the star rising. Mm -hmm. So there was a star that rose, and it was written. So that those wise men from the east, they remembered the prophecy, and they were able to come and follow the star. Yeah. But they knew that he was going to rise. He was going to be born. He was coming. He was coming. And this was going to be the son of the living God born in Bethlehem. Uh -huh. So they knew he was coming. How many people know you was coming? Uh -huh. See? See? And who fought for you to not be here? Right. 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 So we're dealing with if you don't see, if they don't see you right, they won't hear you right. Right? So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We said we're, it's a battle for vision. It's a battle for vision. And we are in a war. Yeah. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they're mighty to God for the pulling down of strongholds. So there are strongholds in the minds of our people. That's why when we first started talking, we said that, that healing is a children's bread. It's just uh -huh. that simple. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But what stronghold in your mind make you think you're not supposed to get it? Right. What stronghold is there? Oh, because we're supposed to take this medicine, I got to take this one. And, and they said, if I don't take this one, I'm going to have this side effect. Out. What stronghold? Oh, because my mother had this, my father, uh -uh. my mother, this mother uh -uh. on that side uh -uh. had this. And because, oh, so what stronghold is there? Right. Well, because these are strongholds. Right. But if healing is the children's bread, yeah. there's a war for your health. Come on. Come on. There's a war for your healing. Right. Because if you are up and able to do everything God called you to do, the body would be no excuse to do it. Right. right. Because you would just do what God told you to do. Well, I want to tell you today that your healing is coming, but you still got to do the work. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, so you still got to do the work, and you got to tell that body, body, look, this body belongs to God, and you better line up with the scriptures right. that says healing is the children's bread, yeah. and by his stripes I am healed, and right. we're getting up and we're going to do what God told us to do. Right, right. Pulling down strongholds, hmm. pulling down strongholds. So we're going to look at these wars, hmm. these wars, and, and one of the areas we're going to look at is envy. So let's go to the book of James, because we're dealing with these people in this vineyard. They knew it wasn't theirs. But they treated it like it was. Right. And when the owner, the husband man who had it, he was coming to collect, then he wanted to give him what was rightfully his. Right. You know, sometimes there are people that are waiting for folks to die so that they can collect something. Jesus. You know, today and nowadays, you have people doing all kinds of things, and they're taking folks' houses yeah. fraudulently. Yeah. And by yeah. the time they learn about it, it's already gone. Right. And the only thing you can do is find them in court. See? For him for a long time. Right, for your stuff. But if you catch it beforehand, mm. come on, there's a war. There's, yeah. It's a war. Yeah. It's better to catch it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. why you got to know what's yours. Right. That's, you got to know what's yours. You have right. to look at your, you need to know what's yours. You that way you know what to yours. fight for. Yeah. Come on, if you don't know that that thing belonged to you, anybody can take it. Yeah. Right. But it's got your name on it. Right. And so, you know, you have people who have wheels. You have people who have, have property and someone who, who, who there's oil, listen, oil in different yeah. various places, right? That has got oil that belongs to them. But if you don't know it, hmm. and when that thing gets to go be gone and sold, and if they said they contacted you, and you know you ain't never been contacted, they said, right. well, we already done our effort. Right. The right efforts to try to find the families that right. rightfully own this. Right. Well, that your money is just, just um, with the company. Right. There are things that belong to people. Right. Come on, there belongs to you. Right. And so it's a matter of knowing what's yours. Right. All right? So we're going to look at some of these things that try to block us from getting what we're supposed to get. The right. gates of hell should not prevail against God's church. Uh -huh. James 4. And one, we're going to look at this war, right? God has got a war. And I want you to know why you need to be warned because God says in, in the book of Matthew, what we just read about the vineyard, these are things that never belong to the people. See? 
It was never theirs, okay. right? And so let's look at this war because here's the war for this land. Uh -huh. Why is it there? James 4 and 1 says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. See? You're only asking for your own See? purpose, for your See? own reasons. Right, right. So you he says, you adulterers mm. and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship oh, of the world is enmity with God? Right. See, some people are trying to get things just for status. Right, right. You know, we say this is hard. Look at look what we built. Right. Look at what we got. Want well, to see how many cars right. in the driveway? Right. How many cars in the garage? Right. You see this Lamborghini and you see, yeah, y'all can't afford that, huh? Y'all right. just can't afford that. And can only drive one at a time. Stop. <laughs> right. And so, so don't don't you see all this? Don't, right. don't you see all right. this? You, you see it? You, you want to rock it? Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> see. Mm -hmm. So, friendship of the world mm. is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Yeah. Didn't say might. Mm -mm. It says, do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy? Mm -hmm. So that human spirit, that thing lusts to envy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you're born with. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need to be born again. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit that wants something that ain't theirs. It, and, and the thing about envy. Envy, envy. This thing about envy, it says that it grieves not because another has good, but that one does not have it and seeks to supply such deficiencies in himself. So they see not because another has the good, but because they lack it. And they don't have it. So they have to get it. And so they'll do anything to get it. It says it it may degenerate into a, uh, to cause a war upon the good which it beholds on another. So it looks at what you have and it only desires to war against you to get it because they don't have it. So it's like covetousness. You don't know covet, you don't know idolatry until you know covetousness. Thou shalt not covet. Verse 6 says, but he giveth more grace, wherefore, he said, God re resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So wars and rumors of wars, these things come because people desire to have something that's not theirs. Right. It's not theirs in the beginning. Right. We understand that Joseph had a dream. Joseph in the Old Testament had a dream and he had a dream about his sheaves. They had come down and people were bowing down to the sheaves. Their sheaves bowed down to their sheaves. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we're not bowing down to you. They, right. they understood what the dream meant. We're not bowing down to you. And so because of his dream, when they saw him coming, they wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. Because of the dream that he didn't make up himself. Right. It came from God. Mm -hmm. So God was positioning him to be in a place of ruling. And what they did to him, they did to him in evil and in anger and in jealousy. But it was meant to be that way so he could get to where he was supposed to. Right. Right? Uh -huh. right? Right. He had to do that. He had to, he had to go through that way he so to. he can get to where he had to go. Right. right? So we understand that there was a great famine in the land and God had to use Joseph who even when he got there. You had Potiphar's wife looking at him. And he ended up in a prison. Then he went to another place, right? And, and the Pharaoh
Pharaoh ended up pulling him out of the prison because he had a dream. It was yet his gift of dreams and interpretation that comes from God that got him where he was supposed to go. Right. And so no matter what the condition was, Joseph had to keep using the gift. Mm -hmm. Because, see, here's one thing about envy. Envy wanted to slaughter the dreamer. Right. right. Don't yeah. let him dream. Right. Take that coat of many colors because he's special. And why did he get that coat in the first place? See? None of the brothers had one right. but him. Right. That's just how it went. Mm -hmm. So look at Jeremy. So some, sometimes people just going to not like what's going on in your life. They're just not going to like it. They're just not going to like it. You know, one thing I learned about um, they have Beyonce and her sisters and her friends. This is one thing I, I've learned that was really good. The mother said she knew that her daughter was going to be the star. Mm. She knew it. So she prepared the sister and the friends to know, don't we just always have each other's back? Mm -hmm. But this one, she's going to be first. She's going to be the one out there. She's going to be the greater one. But always have.